well, I think I get a bit paranoid that that might kill it for me if I <laughs> if it looks too much like a proper job. Thank you for joining us, Alice. Now, you found success across three different mediums of storytelling. There's a lot to cover, but I wonder if first we could go back um, to how it started. When did you get into writing and become interested in theatre? Um, I mean, I I consider myself very lucky. I think I always knew I wanted to be a writer. I don't think I knew that you could write, I don't think I understood that you could write scripts or like plays or films, you know, or like that what, what people said on when you turned on your telly had been written by somebody. But um, I always sort of wrote stories when I was younger. And then they did sort of come out like plays accidentally. I guess my parents, parents sort of took us to the panto when I was quite little and that was just the most thrilling. <laughs> thing and I wrote a panto when I was about seven or eight made my friends do it <laughs> which is horrible <laughs> and um and then yeah I just um and then I think you know my we didn't we lived in quite a small town but that didn't really have theatre or anything but my mum was really great at kind of like seeing seeing that that was that was something that I loved and so so would take us um and then yeah, when I was 16, I, I did work experience at the Royal Court Theatre in London, which was really, I mean, like I wrote them several begging letters um, and, and, the, and they kind of let me come for a week. And that was a huge kind of game changer, really, because I just I read all these plays by writers that I'd never heard of before. And um, and 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 then from then on, I think that was like, OK, that's that's what I want to do. So I. Yeah, it was it, it's sort of always what I wanted to do. And then what was your first break then as a playwright? Um, I mean, it was it 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 felt like that, you know, it felt like I'd made up my mind quite quickly and, and then uh, <laughs> then it took a little bit longer. You know, wrote a play at university that I had lots of cups of tea on, you know, like I sort of my tutor sent it to David Eldridge, who's a playwright, and he and he was really kind and uh, gave me lots of sort of advice and I got an agent um, but nothing happened you know like I was I had done a group with Polly Stenham who's a brilliant playwright who had written a play at age 19 and it had gone on and was you know a great big big hit um, and I think I was like right so that'll be that's how you do it and and, and it didn't, didn't happen so I, I sort of had um, you know wrote lots of short plays that were on in you know pub theatres and you know sort of yeah, did did that for, for what felt like quite a long time. And then I wrote a play called Many Moons, which was on a, a theatre above a pub, which which did OK. And it was published. And but I had, you know, other jobs and was sort of writing in between waitressing shifts and nannying. And um, and I guess there was a, a shift. I wrote a play for the RSC, um, which was called Revolt. She said Revolt again. And, and I think that one sort of just got a little bit more attention and so I had some meetings from that and then I met through that play I, I sort of met the director Will Oldroyd who said you know he, he, he was a filmmaker and he wanted to make his first feature and I wasn't really interested in film I sort of hadn't really you know I, I really loved watching films and but just felt like it was this whole other it was sort of like being like and now why don't you come and sort of be a scientist you know it just felt like a whole other um skill set and and um so I I think I was a bit not sure but I really liked him and and found him really inspiring and thought we could you know and, and he'd made some really interesting strange beautiful short films um and um yeah we sort of hung out a bit and then I I had read this book at university which is one of maybe only three times I've had this where I thought, oh, I think this would make a great film. And that book was um, uh, Lady Macbeth of Matensk, which is this Russian novella by Nikolai Leskov. And I, I gave it to Will and he really loved it. So we began that process through eye features. Um, yeah, so, so sort of went through that whole scheme and, um, and, um, and ended up making that film, which was, a really brilliant experience and like what's the difference do you think from writing a play you know for, for the stage versus you know your debut um feature film yeah 
I mean, I was so lucky on Lady Macbeth because we didn't, I, we really, I mean, we had lots of support and eye features, you know, that scheme, they really sort of nurture you and, and give you sort of lessons and everything. And, and so that was great. So I really sort of felt like I was getting, you know, lots of, lots of support because it, it quite, felt quite daunting to write a film script. You know, I didn't like even final draft is like, yeah. It's, it's quite a thing to kind of grapple with. I just couldn't, I just couldn't figure out the form. In fact, I wrote it like a play script for a long time until they were like, no, you have to, have to do it in final draft at some point. So, um, and it was, I hadn't done an adaptation on, on stage either at that point. And, and, um, and, and so it just, it felt like a whole kind of different thing. I mean, theatre, certainly in this country, theatre is really, I have found, um, broadly speaking, to be to be sort of the writer is really, it's it's you know it's, it's all about your voice and and sort of um, and and you can I, I suppose feel like the primary author and, and creator in that sense. Whereas for film and TV, it's, it's it has felt slightly different um, at, at various points. So, but in terms of the writing, essentially, it's still the same thing I still feel like it's me on my own trying to like pull something from me uh, you know mm. usually in the middle of the night <laughs> yeah and then did you miss that did, did you miss that sort of autonomy you know that you described when you're a playwright versus when you're collaborating in such a different way on, on a film I mean I, I I like to work on more than one thing at the same time so I think I, th I think I do sort of need to feel like I that, like those different muscles are being used and and that you know maybe <laughs> maybe I can you know my ego can be <laughs> fed more in, in theatre and and then but I you know when you're working with the right people I find that kind of collaboration really brilliant I, I sort of found with Lady Macbeth that I wanted to write a really robust map for Will so that when he was on set he could he had something that felt very like I you know I did all the sort of character work that I would normally do and and sort of and and just be really rigorous and um and just make sure that there was a real sort of a really strong foundation for him to stand on so that those conversations that sometimes happen on set with an actor you know where they want to try a different line or, or suddenly they have a different idea or the, or the shot does something else or it's raining that day whatever it is that you can sort of be a bit more you know if you if you've done all that groundwork then then hopefully you're you've you sort of have the freedom to to do what's needed on the on the day in that moment but I yeah I mean it's also I, th I think it's just it is really lovely <laughs> to kind of hand something over as well to somebody else that you trust and feel inspired by it was mm. yeah and now going on to your TV work. Um, mm -hmm. So I think your first TV experience was working as the story editor on Succession. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about that time um, in the writer's room? And I wonder if you draw on some of those kind of lessons that you absorbed in that room when you're writing your own TV shows now. For sure, yeah, that was, I mean, I was such a fan of so I worked on the second series and um and just thought the first series was like incredible and just loved it and I had met Jesse a, a few years before and um and Jesse Armstrong who, who who's the creator and um showrunner and um he yeah just asked if I'd like to come and be in the room and I had never been in a writer's room before it's sort of you know I think I think there's loads more now in this country but it's sort of you know it feels like such an American tradition and I was really I had sort of started just was just starting kind of work on my own show that I was you know go, going to be showrunner on so I sort of thought well this would be such a wonderful opportunity to come and kind of see what that's like and um, and be, be in someone else's process um and succession is you know the rice room is is really it goes on for a really long time which is a real luxury um and um but I think you can just feel it in the show those characters are so you know you could we spend like such a long time talking about how long how long are you talking like months, months, months yeah yeah, they had already done some work in the summer, some other writers and sort of like on the broader kind of plot arc and then 
and then you know you spend a week on each episode and then you go back again and and it just it I mean there is of course there's pressure and by the end of it you're still feeling like there's a lot of pressure but you do also really feel like you have time to kind of talk about Mm. these incredible and there's so much (laughs) in that show that never makes it onto screen in a in a like explicit way but it's just so baked into those characters and he knows you know their whole history and everything that they've ever said to each other and you know it's sort of and I think you can really feel that so it just it felt like I mean, it was it was such a thrill to be in that room, and a, and it's very funny, you know, like you know the sort of um, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I just I absolutely stole like all of his history. You know, I sort of just I really took it as a real opportunity to learn, and he's incredibly generous about about that. When you went on to adapt Normal People, and obviously that's that was a phenomenal success. I loved it. Um, were you so how did that come up come up were you a fan of Sally's work um and was it a daunting prospect to adapt this source yeah. material yes 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 and yes yes <laughs> um uh yeah I had read the book um w- when it came out I'd sort of uh, I'd um I'd read it really quickly I um I was and uh, I was really I had quite a young child at the time who wasn't really sleeping and I really remember sort of like sitting on his bedroom floor reading just reading it even though I should have been asleep um because he was finally asleep and um uh yeah I just it felt like such an emotional experience to read I I sort of hoovered it and it was really compelling and I fell in love with those characters and you know it's such a she's such an elegant writer and I I think I, I I think this is the only time I've done this. So I emailed my agent straight away and I was like, what's happening? Who's doing this? Can I be, you know, like, can is, I would love to, to work on this. Is there any kind of way? And, and um, he said, oh, it's, you know, it's uh, Lenny Abramson's doing it and um, it's with Rose Garnet, it's BBC and, um, and and Sally Rooney is, is writing it. And I was just like, okay, well, that's, I'm just going to wait. That sounds heaven. Um, and then... A few months later, they got in touch because Sally had written the first six and done the most beautiful job. Like, you know, that I read those scripts and they were just in, you know, the dialogue was just beautiful and it was really like the experience of reading the book. Um, but I think she wanted to work on her next book and was in the middle of this press, you know, tour for because of course, no more people, the book was just the most phenomenal um, success. So they asked if I would come and come and kind of work work on it. So I uh, I co-wrote, I did the next pass on the on the first six, but we, you know, we kept working together. And then I, d- I did the next four and the last one. Um, so, I mean, it was such a, I was, I was quite busy when they, when they called, but I just was like, yeah, of course, like would love to do this it's such a it was a dream dream job um and yes incredible I mean was it, it was it was daunting when I if I would let myself think about what it was but I I, I think I'm quite a compartmentalizer and I do tend to forget that there's going to be an audience or that or that anyone else has read that book I tried really hard to just remember how I felt when I read it. And so can you go through your process of adapting a novel? How do you identify something to adapt? Um, so I know normal people caught your eye because you were a reader of it, a genuine fan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, is that how is that how it, it comes about quite naturally for you? No, it's, it's different every time. And um, I mean, I, I suppose first, yeah, I, I sort of felt lucky in a really lucky, incredibly fortunate position where people will send me books or articles or you know things to 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 read or or even you know I've just done this just finishing this TV show that's an adaptation of a film from the eighties. So it's you know it's um I think it's again it's just back to those the guts the like instincts you know read something and it might not be this is the best thing ever written or 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 it's but it's but there's something about it I just I just sort of feel like I know 
I can see it. There's a reason to adapt it. I understand that, you know, it will, that it will kind of, as it transitions, it will, it, it makes sense that it needs, it could, it could exist in a new form, in a new medium on a screen, whether it's a film or a, or a TV um, series. And it's, it's really, really different every time. It's often about a character and like, you know, do, do I feel compelled and excited to spend a lot of time <laughs> with these people and, um, and tell these stories? And, and just, does it feel cinematic or does it feel compelling or, or does it feel funny or does this feel like something I haven't seen before? Like something that I suppose is, is this something that can like really hold my interest and in, something that I can kind of fall in love with and grapple with for like, maybe years because sometimes mm. it's years often it's years um and then I mean <laughs> I didn't do with this with normal people so maybe I shouldn't do it because because that won't work but I do tend to if it's a book I tend to write it out by hand that's always like the first thing I'll do purely because that's like a really practical thing to do and often my first feeling after having said yes to something or day one on a new project is a bit like oh god what what should what should I do I've forgotten what my job is and so, and so to have quite a practical task um I find really helpful and I think it also there's something about that process that means I probably I've, I'll, I'll definitely find things that I missed on the first or second read always yeah and I think it gives me a kind of like you have to find a way to take ownership over it and and that sometimes is helpful because psychologically maybe I'm pretending <laughs> <I wrote it. laughs> I'd love to talk about what a writing day looks like for you um so what's a typical day like when you're working what's your space like um what do you need around you to work yeah and it's I think it's there are some things that have really changed some things that have really changed and some things that have remained pretty much the same I'm not I don't I think it's wonderful when writers have and I think it's really important to say that when 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 there is a rhythm or, or a process or, or or I know lots of writers you know you have to sort of have you know it start the day starts at nine and you do this and then you do this and then you do this and or you have to hit five thousand words or whatever it is and I think I think those are great I'm um I've never been able to kind of find a grown up way of doing it and I I think that's probably <laughs> something uh, that. I, don't, well, I think I get a bit paranoid that that might kill it for me if I <laughs> if it looks too much like a proper job. Um, I write like when I'm writing scripts or um, plays or whatever. I, I tend to do the best work or the most of it at night. Mm. So I'll do a you know when it's coming up to a deadline, I'll I'll do a series of all nighters and and you know sort of start when the kids have gone to bed and I've exhausted the internet or whatever and you know if it's going well then you know two three four five in the morning and 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 because there's something about it that I think feels quite private that time of day I feel quite far away from the idea that anyone's going to see it or read it so I feel like I can be a bit braver um and 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 also I think since having kids I think it's sort of yeah the kind of gets me a, a bit further away from them sometimes which is sometimes necessary and so a lot of our audience I think will be you know emerging writers and um one of the sort of parts of our jobs if you like is dealing with notes and dealing with rejection yeah so what advice would you have uh for people that are, are listening yeah I mean, again, I think that be kind to yourself. I think the thing is really important, um, you know, and 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 you do so like do trust that you that it gets better and and you know that you will develop more tools and be more equipped to kind of to deal with both of those things and that they happen in different ways. You know, they're sort of like I still turn in a draft and and get heaps of notes or or and or it feels like a rejection and you know you've got more work to do than you thought or um and it's still painful but you, you sort of it, I don't know I, th I think it sort of feels more pragmatic as well um I think I mean it is unfortunately part of it the rejection yeah. and 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 I do you know I suppose 
I it's really easy for me to say this now I appreciate but I am forever grateful that that first play that I wrote on the Young Writers Programme did not have the experience that Polly Stenham had it didn't go on immediately and have lots of people staring at it because I wasn't ready and and I got to like I got to make mistakes in safer environments and I got to try things out and I got to like really find my voice in in a whole kind of different you know I would say like find work really hard to find your community and like go and see as much stuff as possible and read as much as possible and like read stuff that you don't like and watch stuff that you don't like and also like you know think about it as like art like go and you know go and stand in a gallery and think about like look at a picture and think about your work being part of that like I think it's I, I think it's important to take it seriously whilst not taking yourself too seriously.